So in the last video, we started this, you know, Node.js application. We saw Hello World and of course, localhost 81. And we explained the host to container port map, right? And we were able to start up, all right, our container. Now, of course, we mentioned the fact that if you do not give your container a name, it's going to generate just an arbitrary name for your container, right? So what we're going to see next is how to give your container a name and, of course, how you can rename uh, a container as well. I mean, this container is already running. If I want to change this name without, you know, stopping the container and starting the container again with a new name, how do I go about all of that, right? Another thing that I want to also show us is around, you know, container ports, okay? Now, here, if you look at this particular Python file, so this is the server.py, and this particular Python is running on port 8000, but I can change it, and I can say I want this particular Python application to also run on port 8080. Now, we already have a container that is running on port 8080, right? I mean, we have one already running. And locally, we have exposed port 81. So that means on the host system, you cannot use port 81 again. Well, how about the container port 8080? Can we reuse that? Would there not be any conflict? Okay, now let's take a look at that. Now, for the Python, we also have a simple Docker file. I mean, basically the same Docker file that we just, I mean, that we saw with um, the node uh, application. But here, you can see that here, the base image is different because this is a Python application. So we need to use a base image that basically will work with the application that we're trying to run. Because it's not going to make any sense for you to use a node-based image to run a Python application. Now, why there's no problem with that? Because, I mean, you can also install Python inside of any base image and all of that. I mean, you can make available tools, commands that you want to use within your image, you can make it available by running some extra commands like, you know, install and things like that, okay? But of course, the idea behind Docker is that when you want to run any Docker application, all right, I mean, you have a container that you want to run, you have a Docker file that you want to specify to run an application, the, 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 the best practice is to actually look for an image that at least meets the minimum requirements to run that particular application. So if I want to run a Python application, I need to look for what? A Python image. If I want to run a Node application, I need to use what? A Node image that contains, all right, the Node runtime and all of that already. Okay? Now here, we're using Python 3, the same environment variable, and then we are copying the server.py, which is this particular script here. We're copying that into the SRC folder. You can also see that the Python application also uses the SRC directory by default. Okay? Now, you also see that the user data here was, I mean, commented because it wasn't actually necessary. And then we have the CMD, like we saw with the node application, Python, all right, server the path. I mean, normally when you want to run a Python application locally, you have to do Python and then you specify the name of the file to basically run your Python command. So that is exactly what we're doing here. So we have the Docker file and we have the server.py. So the server.py, the port is going to be opening up on port 8080, but we already have a container that is, I mean, running on port 8080. So we want to look at it, if there's going to be a conflict or there won't be any conflict. So what do we do? We basically change directory into, all right, the Python directory. So I'm going to do cd dot dot slash Python. All right, to so change, all right, into that Python directory. And right here, I'm going to say Docker, build i think t so let's just call this python all right column version one i mean let's put it that way or let's call it python app all right column version one so the tag is not going to be latest it's going to be version one right and i'm going to say dot to basically say that my docker file is in this current working directory right so let's build that okay and then of course we'll come back and see uh, how to run this application. So the image has been built. And of course, if you go to your Docker uh, desktop, you can see the Python app here. And then of course you can see the tag, the tag says version one. And of course the status is what? Unused, right? So let's get back here. So now if I do Docker images, right? I can see here that I have a Python app. The version is one. And I can also see that the size is 1.0 or 1.2. That's quite heavy. Okay, but of course, we'll get into how to reduce the image size as we go on in the course of the class, right? Now, again, this Python is listening also on port 8080. So let's give something a try. 
So I'm going to say Docker run hyphen D hyphen P. So put 81 has been taken already on the O, so we can use that because, I mean, it, it continues using that already because you cannot use the same port on your host to, I mean, to connect to two different services, right? So once a service has taken hold of a particular port on your host machine, you cannot use that port again until that particular service releases. All right, that. So I'm going to come here and say port 82, for example, and I'm going to say 88. So what do you think? Is there going to be a conflict with this related one? Are we not going to run into an error? I mean, let's, let's, let's take a look. Now, I don't want docker to give my container any arbitrary name so i will use iphone iphone name to basically give my container all right a name and i'm going to call it python all right app. now one of the beauty of giving your container a name that it makes that particular container easier to reference because the container id is an arbitrary number all right an auto generated hexadecimal number that you really cannot memorize so the way to actually manage your container is to basically give your container a name so that when you want to do anything with that container whether you want to check the container log whether you want to log in into the container to do some things right it is easy for you to access your container using the name instead of the container all right id and that is why it is important to give your container a befitting name at all time right for easier reference okay so i find i find i find i find name so that's the name of the container and of course the app the image that we want to run is python app okay column v1 that's the version all right that, that's the python image that we want to run as a container and then i'm going to press enter and now it gives me the container id so now if i do docker ps to basically check I can see that now here I can see the Python, all right, the container name. I can see the container ID. I can see the image. I can see that the command of actually is running. So the command is Python. And then, of course, it's executing the server.py. And I can see now that is, I mean, opened up. So port 82 is directing back to what? To 8080. I mean, this didn't give us an error, right? That tells you that your containers can actually run on the same port but the host port has to be different. So in Docker, when you're running your images as a container, the container can basically be on the same port. So what actually distinguishes the container from one another is the host port mapping, right? So that means if I go to my browser and I do local host column 82, Docker exactly knows the container that that traffic belongs to. So there's no mistake whatsoever. Okay, so your containers can run the same port, 8080, 8080, 8080, 8080, but the host port is what will distinguish them one from another. Okay, so if I go to localhost 82, Docker knows already that, oh, 82 is directing to this particular container regardless of the port number. Is that okay? So now if I come here and I open up this and I say localhost, all right, and I say 82, I mean, it's going to give me hello world Python. So there is no mistake at all as to, all right, the container the traffic belongs to. Okay. So the host port is what distinguishes. Your container port can basically be the same thing, right? It can be anything. They can be 8080. They can be the same number. But then the host port has to be, all right, different. Is that okay? And of course, if I go back here to my containers, I can see that, of course, I have the name Python app. So you can see that it's not giving it any auto-generated name um, at all. Okay, so you can see here the Python app is running with the correct name. 82 is redirecting to 8080. 81 is redirecting to 8080. And there's no problem at all. I mean, if I go back to the Node.js app and I refresh it, I mean, there's no problem. Is that okay? So that is one thing that I want us to understand. And if I click on this particular container and I click on the logs, I can see that this particular container is exporting out the right logs. And if I come here to my terminal and I do Docker logs, and now I don't have to specify the container ID. I can basically just use the name of the container, all right, to view the logs of that container. So I can come and say Python app. And of course, right here, I can see the logs of that container. So that is the importance of giving your container, all right, a name. Is that okay? So now, I don't, even if I don't remember the container ID, as far as I remember the name I gave my container, I can use that to reference my container, to access my container, and to do whatever it is that I want to do with, all right, my container. Is that okay? Now, another thing I want to show us is how do you rename 
this particular container so we have this container running we don't want that name actually we want to rename it so let's try out something so if i come here and i say docker rename that's the command actually so what do i want to rename so i want to rename this particular container so i can do hyphen hyphen f to basically check okay the name all right i mean the options that are available for this command so here it says the alias is actually docker container rename and then docker rename okay so the way to use the command is what docker rename and then the container new name okay that is the way to use it so let's go here so here we have this container that we want to re rename so we're going to copy that all right so docker rename okay so the new name is going to be so let's call it node app and of course let's put the old name here and let's press enter now look at what it says it says error response for dinner from daemon no such container okay so that tells us that the way to go about it is to first specify the container that you want to rename so this is the container that i want to rename and of course i can come in and say node hub all right and then press enter and now i can see that i didn't get an error so the idea so now if you look at this command it is misleading right it says docker rename container new name okay but if you look at that command clearly it says docker rename the name of the container you want to rename and then the new name but if you look at this as docker container new name you will think it's just the new name first and then the container name later no it is docker rename the name of the container you want to rename all right or the id of that container and then the new name that you want to give all right to that container so now if i come in and I do docker ps right i can see that my container has been what renamed i didn't even have to stop the container so you can rename your containers without stopping the container it basically will work so rename the whole name and the new name so it can be the container id or the container name and then a new name that you want to give to your container okay so now lastly let us all right build our python application sorry the php application so that one is basically uh, accessible on port 80 because it is using php all right um apache so here this one is using php hyphen 8 hyphen apache right so we're using the apache uh base image to run this and of course the index.php and you can see that it is copying that into the var www.html directory which is the default directory for your apache all right web server so what do we do so we do cd column column slash php and then you enter into that and then you can do your docker all right build hyphen t so let's call this php app all right column version one and then we put dot here to basically build the image right now apache by default works on port 80 so even if you don't specify a port for this it will still run on port 80. is that okay so let's build the image from here and let's see what we have and of course, if you go to your Docker desktop and click on build, you can actually actually see that the build has completed. And from here also, you can also see if you have an active build. So if I click on active build, it will show me if there's any build that is ongoing. But right here, you can see that I have a build, PHP build, that completed just now. I mean, in about 15 seconds and then about. So if I click on images, I can see my image right here. And if, if you look at the size of that, that one is quite light, okay, 507 um, MB. So it's not as heavy as uh, the other ones that we can see um, right here. Is that okay? And of course, I don't have it running yet as a container. So I can come here and just do Docker, run, hyphen D, hyphen P. So my image, this particular image is running on port 80 by default, right? So I can say 80, column 80 right i mean i don't have any container running on 80 even if i have any container running on 80 that's not a problem right and on my old side of on my old side i don't have any attachment to the port 80 already so i can just basically just you know use that right and then i can say the name is php app all right and the name of the image is going to be um what did we give the image so let's quickly check the image name here the image name is php app version one right so i'm going to say php app column v1 okay so that's all i need to do and i press enter and now if i do docker ps i can see that i have the php all right you know um uh, uh, the php container is also started up and of course it's using the php version one all right and of course i can see here that is accessible on port 80 and is redirecting all right to 80. okay so that means if i go to my browser all i need to do is just to say localhost 
All right, and that's all I need to do. So localhost, hello world, Apache PHP, and my application is running. Now, look at the beauty of Docker. I have three different programming languages that I'm executing on my system, and I didn't have to have any of them installed locally, right? And the three of them, they are running in a lightweight manner, okay? Because Docker is actually lightweight. It doesn't consume too much of your compute resources compared to virtual machines, right? I mean, the, if you're running a virtual machine, you can't have you can't have a virtual machine that is just 1.27 gig. I mean, that's not possible, right? I mean, you have a virtual machine image size that will be running to let's say 10 gig, 20 gig, 30 gig, depending on the kind of OS that that VM is running. Okay, but here we can see that I mean, we're not even consuming too much. Look at it. My RAM is only just consuming about 1.4 gig of my RAM. I mean, my CPU is not is not even is not even, my CPU is not even aware that anything is happening. Look at that. It's just 0.01 percent of about 28 all right CPUs that are available. And look at the RAM. I mean, I have about 32 gig of RAM, but of course, about 16 gig is allocated to Docker. But you can see that it's only consuming 42 MB of the RAM, not even gig, just 42 MB of the RAM. I mean, if if this were to be a virtual machine, I'm sure I will have been using, I mean, if I have three VMs, I mean, imagine if I have three VMs, one for Node, one for Python, one for PHP, perhaps I will have been using maybe half of my memory by now, and maybe about 10% or more of my CPU, okay? But of course, I'm using Docker and my CPU is running normally. I can do whatever it is that I want to do on my system without any kind of, you know, any kind of slowness or, you know, and all of that. And you can see the memory usage very light. Of course, this again has to do with the fact that we are running, I mean, lightweight containers. We're not running too much. Um, I mean, there, there are not too many processes, right, going on with our containers. Okay. But of course, it just shows you. All right, the lightweight nature of Docker compared to virtual machines. Is that okay? And the three of the applications are running on my system. All right, I mean, one is not affecting the other. If I come here again and I refresh, one is not affecting the other. So that is the beauty, all right, of Docker right there. And of course, if I want to stop all of this container, all I need to do, basically, right, I can, I can just come here and say, okay, Docker stop, and I can use the name of each of them. Right, I mean, that's another importance of using the name. Okay, I can use the name of each of the containers. So I can say Docker stop. So PHP app, Python app, and I can say node app. Okay, and basically that will stop all the three containers. So PHP app is stopped. Okay, the Python app is going to stop next, and the node app is going to be the last one. All right, to so stop. So that is another importance of giving your container a name. I mean, I, I, I don't have to put memorize the ID. I can use the name to do whatever it is that I want to do. And of course, my container has been stopped. So if I come here and I say Docker, all right, PS, I can see that I don't have any running containers. But of course, if I come here and I do Docker PS hyphen A, that will show me all the containers that I have, all right, available, okay? whether running or the one that I've stopped. So you can see it says exited. So which means these containers have been stopped. They are not running at the moment. And if I go to my Docker desktop and I click on containers, I can see that it's no longer green. It's basically showing me that I mean, I've exited. So these containers are no longer all right running. Okay. But of course the images are still in use because the container was derived from the image. So if you want to delete an image, you must first delete a container and all of that. So we'll get into all of that in the next video. But then, but then I think we have all right, learned one or two things here again today. So thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.